All right, hello, OAS family. It is time for another book review, and today we are going to review a book uh, called A Hundred Cranes by Ho Yu Li. So uh, this book is an interesting book because it's focused on a single subject and it is an, an album of collected works, soft cover album of collected works uh, by various uh, masters on the subject of Crane. So not, uh, that's kind of an unusual uh, format for a book, so it's good to highlight that. Before we get into the body of the book, we should talk about the general statistics. So the book is eight and a quarter inches wide by 11 and three quarter inches high. And it has 107 pages. And it is bound in this sort of like traditional Chinese way. Um, so it actually reads uh, the opposite of what we are used to from a Western book. So this is the front cover and you're reading reading the book this way, which is kind of like uh, the, the sort of older Chinese way. Almost uh, no books are uh, really bound in this way anymore, even if they're uh, written completely in Chinese. Most of the books are sort of bound in, in the way that uh, Westerners are more accustomed to, which is sort of this being the front cover and then reading like this, but this, uh, this book is bound in the traditional way. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it here. Um, so we have an introduction here, uh, it's in Chinese, uh, and then we get into some black and white paintings here um, by uh, Fu and Wu. And then this is a uh, solitary crane by Chi Bai Shi and uh, Crane and Pine by uh, Su Bei Hong. Some additional crane uh, paintings here. These are an interesting style. It's kind of like a nice, um, nice middle style between uh, sort of a gongbi, you know, so you can see there's definitely some detail work here when it comes to the the uh, head and the neck, but then as you get down to the feathers, there are some freer strokes here. I really like this style. It's a nice combination of what is appealing about both of the styles. So these are like uh, almost like informal like uh, sketches, uh, but really, really beautiful work. Showing the different positions of the bird and how much character it has in the various, uh, expressing all the various physicality in the different in di in the different ways. So that finishes this sort of like um, kind of uh, sketch uh, section. And then now we're getting into uh, more formalized uh, work. This, this painting is called Pine Crane of Longevity by Sheshu Toyo, Japanese artist. And this is Bamboo and Cranes by Kano Tusunobu. These are two paintings by Bunsei, uh, which is Song of the Waves and uh, Cloud Song. And then three paintings by uh, anonymous painters. This one's called Maple Stream and Crane. And then this one is Gathering of the Cranes. And this is Crane and Egret. These are three paintings by Imao Kainen. This one here 
uh, is called On the Isle of Immortals. So it's sort of like a cliffside with a pine tree overlooking the ocean. And then Crane in Autumn. And then Cranes uh, and Young. So first time that we're seeing uh, sort of Young Crane rendered here. So this is uh, Cranes and Chrysanthemum by Kishi Ganku. I think this was featured uh, on one of our recent emails. And this is White Crane by Hashimoto Kansetsu. And then this one here on the right hand side is Cranes at Rest by Morikawa Sobun. These both, both these paintings are by Morikawa. And this one is called Cranes in Flight. Let's see these paintings here in their proper orientation. This is like a large multi-paneled painting from an anonymous painter called uh, Cranes by the Bamboo Stream. It's like a six-fold screen. And then uh, two paintings by different artists that exhibit this very soft um, quality. Uh, this one is uh, Crane and a Hollyhock by Kobayashi Koke. And this is Under Wisteria by Kikuchi Kagetsu. And another one featuring cranes and uh, their young on a pair of Sliding Doors by Yamanochi Taman. It's interesting that this was painted on these two sliding doors. You can actually see the handles there. Getting into some very modern looking pieces here. So this is a nice thing about this book is it's not just focused on kind of the more traditional styles, but you see a variety of styles, including ones that seem very modern. Uh, this one is called Ripples by Hashimoto Meiji. And this one is called Frozen Fields by Kanashima Keika. So this is like a very different uh, color palettes. One is very uh, vibrant. Um, and then this other one is, is much more subtle and muted. Very, very lovely qualities in these three paintings by Uemura Shoko. Very soft quality that highlights just the crane against these sort of misty backgrounds. So this one is called Moonlight. And then this is Waiting. And then here is Crane and Bamboo. So this one is by Uemura Junji and it's uh, Moonstream. And then this one is called A Thousand Cranes by Kayama Yuzo. So this is the first time where we see kind of like only the silhouettes rendered. You see them done in gold here. So very, very striking sort of picture of these thousand cranes, gold cranes against this moonlight. Over here is a painting called Wings and Ways by Kayama Yuzo. And then on the left is Crane and Bamboo by Monk M Muchi. And then on the right here is Auspicious Cranes by Emperor Hui Song. 
And then on the left is Early Spring by Ye Shuang Shi. On the right, Crane and Bamboo by Pian Wen Qin and Wang Fu. And then on the left hand side here, 100 Cranes, again by Pian Wenqing. And here's a full panel. by the same artist. And another full page. This beautiful, almost celestial scenery. You have pine and plum blossoms and peach, very, a lot of symbolism here in this painting. Another one that's choosing to sort of take up, you know, this full bleed kind of layout where the, the, the painting is shown going all the way to the edge of the page. Very um, striking layout decision as we switch. We get a bunch of paintings in a row where we get to see the painting stretch all the way to the end, edges of the pages. This is very nice uh, traditional traditional use of this uh, striking sort of mineral blue that you see in the, a lot of the landscape paintings. Here too, interesting sort of like juxtaposition of this mineral blue with this striking pop of red here. I like how these are all shown in different uh, perspectives, different sizes, some closer to the foreground, some sort of hiding and uh, woven uh, amidst the other objects in the composition. So on the right hand side is Crane and Bamboo by Pian Wen Qing. And then on the left hand side is Pine Crane of Longevity by Lin Liang. So this is uh, Crane and Magpie by Li Chen. And then on the left hand side, we have a zoom in of the same painting focusing on just the cranes. Then we have Pine and Crane by Shen Chuan on the right hand side. And then Crane at Nap by the same artist here on the left. So a couple more paintings by Shen Chuan. On the right hand side is Cranes in the Snow, and on the left hand side is By the Sea. And then our first couple paintings by an artist that seems to be not of Asian descent. Um, these are by Giuseppe Castiglione. And uh, on the right hand side, this one is called Crane and Young, and on the left hand side is Six Cranes and Young. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, a painting by Wang Chen called Plum Blossoms in the Wind. 
And then on the left hand side, a painting by Shi Ku called Crane in Autumn. Again, featuring Chrysanthemum, which we know is the four gentlemen subject that represents the autumn. On the right hand side is Under the Pine by Tong Kai. And then on the left hand side is Pine Song by Hua Yin. So we have this painting by Jen Ponien called Solitary Reflection. And then also a detailed shot of just the crane in that painting right next to it. And then on the left hand side we have uh, On a Withered Tree and Banana and Crane by the same artist. Right hand side Welcoming Spring by Chen Chi Fo. And on the left-hand side, Peaches of Longevity, also by Chen Chifo. This is the first one that I see in this kind of, um, this particular Gongbi style that I would sort of consider as like the most iconic kind of Gongbi style. But uh, this is the first time that we see it in this book. And then this is Pine Crane Felicitations, again by Chen Chi Fo. On the right hand side, we have On a Pine Branch by Kao Chen Fu. And then on the left hand side is Frontal Crane by Chi Bai Shi. So again, we have now uh, more spontaneous style renderings, looser renderings, but still very full of character. And then on the right-hand side, birthday, felicitations. This is actually silk embroidery by an anonymous artist. And then on the left, um, birthday, felicitations again. Uh, the crane was painted by Wu Yanshang, and then the pine was uh, painted by Chen Chunfu. So this is a collaborative painting here. Then on the right is Birthday Greeting by Kao Yi Hong. On the left, Under the Pine and Plum Flowers by the same artist. Aged Crane on the right by Shen Shi Tu. And then on the left hand side, we have Twin Cranes and Pine by Yang Shan Chen. The right hand side, In the Blue Pond by Xu Chuan Shi. And then on the left hand side, Lost in Thought by, by Pan Tian Shou. So, Dawn Wakes on the right-hand side by Ao Hu Nian. And then on the left-hand side is a painting called Mutual Regard by Li Kumo. So, Fording Pine Stream on the right-hand side by Pan Tian Shou. And then on the left-hand side by The Waterfall by Chin Chin Po. Across two pages here, we have Poised on the Pine Rock by Chao Sheng Chuan. And then on the right hand side, we have By Ancient Pine by Song Li Chun. And then on the left hand side, On Ancient Grounds by Yu Chun Lin. So this is another painting by Yu Chung Lin 
uh, and it's titled for Chin Chin Po's birthday. So a gift from artist to artist. And have this wonderful sort of two cranes on a rock that is sort of stretching out amongst this fast moving stream or creek with a pine tree. And then on the right hand side, we have Watchful Cranes by Chen Jui Kang. And then on the left hand side, uh, Greetings by Chao Song Yun. And that is it. So this is the back cover of the book that we started looking at in the first place. It's, this is uh, 100 Cranes by Ho Yu Li. So you can find this book uh, on our website. And we want to thank you for watching and thank you for uh, listening. And if you like uh, this and want more content like this, you can uh, subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. Also leave us a comment uh, if you want to request reviews of other books that we have. Um, we've done quite a lot of these book reviews so far. And we're trying to get through our whole library. We do have the largest um, library of books about Chinese and Japanese painting and calligraphy. Uh, so we encourage you, you know, uh, nowadays, uh, as we get more and more into modern times, um, I think people are relying less and less on books, but uh, I think they really are kind of a forgotten treasure. Uh, there is just something about the commitment to you know, do the layout and to put something in print. And, you know, these are not sort of like print on demand kind of books, but they were done, you know, in the old formats where they had to print, you know, thousands or hundreds of copies at a time and, uh, you know, to sell them one by one. And there's something about the commitment to that process that uh, just um, ensures like a richer level of content than you know a lot of the stuff that you can get electronically so we encourage you the the books are really a wonderful resource and and i almost think about like um you know uh, those of you who have been following us have been you may have noticed that we published a, a mastery process so it's a, it's a brush painting mastery process it's a seven step process that's sort of repeatable that will allow you to build the skills necessary uh, or common in more experienced brush painters. And we, I, I re was really inspired to put that together because I just felt that if someone could go through that process and develop those skills, then it would sort of unlock this whole treasure of learning that is available in these books. Um, and I think before you do that, you need a, a very particular kind of book, you know, like uh, the books by Ning Ye are good examples or some of the other books by like uh, Oshi Yang that are very sort of step-by-step, -step, very detailed in their instruction. Um, but because of how detailed they are in their instruction, they can, they only cover a certain amount of uh, compositions or subjects. So, you know, the reality of a book is you have a limited amount of space. And so, the more skilled you are as an artist, and if you are able to just uh, develop a comfort level with these different skills, like being able to look at a painting and say, okay, this is how I might try to use that painting as an inspiration or do my own version of it um, without having somebody, um, you know, cut it apart and, and spoon feed it to you from an instruction standpoint. Of course, those instructions are very, those types of instructions and books are really valuable and, but, but they're actually quite rare among brush painting books. So most of them are sort of in this format that we presented where they're like finished final anthologies of master paintings, or, you know, if they're showing some instruction, it's just some very small, um, couple steps, few steps of a little breakdown or a little isolation of an element to give you a general idea. 
So, you know, the more you get through the mastery books, I think the more each one of these books can be very valuable uh, as, a, as a source of inspiration and um, a tool to, to take you different places uh, on your journey as a painter. Okay, so we thank you for watching very much and we wish you happy painting. Thank you.